everyone, I'm in New York City now. Like I mentioned a couple days ago, flights, at least in America, I don't know about everywhere else, are insanely expensive and crazy. To fly home today would have cost me like thousands of dollars for some reason, and flying home tomorrow was thousands of dollars cheaper if I fly home Monday morning as opposed to flying home on a Sunday. So I was like, we'll just make a day of it and go to New York City. So we're in New York City reading Shake Shack. Did I just make a new best friend? And we're gonna go see Sweeney Talk. I'm very excited. Okay guys, we um, ate our Shake Shack and now we're headed to see Sweeney Todd and I'm so excited, I'm so excited. But we're walking through Times Square, which is terrifying. It's very crowded. this. If you like musical theater, if you are a Broadway obsessed human being, especially if you like Sondheim, if you like Sondheim, if you like Sweeney Todd. Oh my god, you guys. Literally so good. I cried 10 times. I thought it was incredible. I don't remember the last time I saw a Broadway show where I left saying that was so unbelievably incredible. Like, and I've seen a lot of wonderful Broadway shows and I, I love seeing Broadway shows, but this one was, oh my God. You guys, it was so good. Okay, so you're gonna watch me totally geek out right now. So if that's boring to you, goodbye. So Josh Groban and Annalie Ashford are the leads, are um, Mrs. Lovett and Sweeney Todd. But Josh Groban was not there. He um, called out. I've seen Josh Groban in concert before when I was in college. Very talented, wonderful man. But his understudy was un. Believable. He had me crying within the five minutes of the show. I'm not kidding. Like the second he's like, there was a barber and his wife. He starts, oh my God, his eyes filled with tears. He looked out in the audience. He was stoic, he was still. And I was like, you have every ounce of my attention. What are you saying? I know all the words. And I was like, what are you telling me? What are you telling me? What story are you telling me? I'm obsessed with you. Oh, he was so good. He has such a beautiful voice. He was so good. He was terrifying, but I felt bad for him. I, just, I loved him so much. He did such a good job. I loved him so much. Okay, it was so good. Everyone was so good. Oh my God, Emily Ashford, if she did not win the Tony, I am starting a riot. She was so freaking amazing. She was so good and I have loved her for a bajillion years. I've always thought she was so talented. I've seen her in so many things and I've always thought she was just absolutely brilliant. She's a brilliant comedian, performer, vocalist, just everything about her. She, I think she is brilliant and she did not disappoint. That woman is so good and that is hard to do. It is hard to take a role that has been done by icons. Icons play the role of Mrs. Lovett. Like it is hard to fill those shoes and do it impressively. And she was incredible. She did the perfect amount of paying homage to people who've done it before. Perfect amount of like, you guys know and love this character, Mrs. Lovett, so I'm gonna do Mrs. Lovett. But then completely did a spin on it and made it her own, but didn't go too far from what everyone knows and loves. She was, she brilliant. It was so good. I'm sorry, if anyone out there does not know Sweeney Todd or like Sondheim shows or musical theater, you're probably like, what the heck are you talking about? It was so good, you guys. I cried so many times. You know, there was a, a few weeks ago I was talking about the feelings I get when I listen to music that I love where I just feel like I'm gonna explode. I felt that the whole show, I was bursting out of my seat. I was like at the edge of my seat listening to this incredible music that Sondheim wrote. I was weeping. I was weeping, literally amazing. And I, like I said, I've seen a lot of Broadway shows. I saw Company, the revival of Company. I thought it was great. And I love the show Company. Company is one of my favorite Broadway shows. In fact, I think I like Company more than I like Sweeney Todd probably as far as Sondheim shows go. And I thought the spin on it was great. I thought it was a cool idea to make Bobby a woman. Like I thought uh, there were some incredible performances in there. Patty Lapone is in it. Hello, Christopher Guest. Christopher Guest. Christopher Sieber. It was wonderful. I really loved Company, but there were things that I was like, oh, I loved this. I didn't like this in Company, but I thought overall it was great. This production is unreal. It was so good. I cannot express it enough. I don't care if you don't agree with me. I don't care if you've seen it and you don't agree with me. I don't care if people say I'm wrong. There's nothing you could say to convince me that this wasn't a brilliant production of Sweet Todd. It is unbelievable. I loved it so much, you guys. I loved it so freaking much. Oh my God, I love Broadway. I love theater. I love musical theater. I love talent. I love talented people. I love people who emote through music and make you feel through music and performance. Oh, it is my favorite thing in the whole world. I love live performance. I love theater. I am such a nerd. 
hard and I don't care. I am so happy right now. It was so good. But I don't know how much people would love it if they weren't like big musical theater fans and big Sondheim fans or Sweeney Todd fans. Like I feel like anyone would really enjoy it. But if you're taking my review of the show right now and being like, whoa, I don't see a lot of theater. I don't see a lot of Broadway, but Queen Sing this is like the best show ever. I've got to go see it. You might be like, what are you talking about? I know and love this music so much. So for me, it was like thrilling to see a Broadway production of it because I know and love this Sondheim music. So like to me, it was probably more thrilling and exciting than it would be to someone else only because like I already have a place in my heart for this show. But anyway, it was so good and I'm done rambling um, about that. For now, I'll probably just ramble more talking to myself. Okay, bye. I'm finally flying home, you guys. I'm so excited and I'm in a fancy mint class. So I'm gonna show you what we got. First, we have everybody's favorite comfort and snap, which includes a decadent pillow and a nice comforter. You have now reached snoozing altitude. This satchel included a sleep mask. Just girly things, he he he. And the oop, shh, shh, shh. earplugs, a wooden toothbrush. Oh, it's plastic. Toothpaste disguised as a tampon. A citrus ginger bite. Relax, Jet Blue. Uni face cream A. Brazilian bum bum cream. My butt really do get dry on planes. Last but not least, grapefruit lip conditioner. I'm home. And Maisie, wanna play with your elephant? She loves her elephant. Flynn found a very large bug. Daddy found it? Bombastic side eye. So we were looking at his pocket bot guide of bugs to find out which one it was. And Flynn's whispering right now um, because he, his throat's hurting, so he's only whispering. Are you pooping? Because it's stinging. Do you go poo poo? You guys want to know what being a mom looks like? Being a mom looks like going on a crazy weekend trip for work slash fun. I got to also have fun. And then getting home off of a flight that's an overnight flight uh, across the country for six hours and not sleeping for two days. And then immediately getting home and taking your child to urgent care, like literally half hour after I got home. That's what we're doing. Because Maisie, I think, has an ear infection. So let's go get her checked out to make sure that she's all good to go. Alrighty, guys, yes, we are at the doctor. Maisie seems to be getting a bit of an ear infection. That is not fun, those hurt. So we're trying to get rid of that. She had a little bit of a cold last week and I think it just like dripped down and started to go into her ears or something, so. It's past her nap time, she's super tired. Hopefully we'll just- I'm done. You're all done? Me too, girl. Okay, guys. Hello. Um, so back from the doctor, Maisie did have an ear infection. See, mommies always know. Moms always know. So Maisie has an ear infection, so we got medicine for her, which is great. And then Wesley um, is doing great, and he's walking so much now. I'm so proud of him. Where are you going? What are you doing? You're such a big boy. You're a big girl, too. You're a big girl. Yeah. Really? Oh my. Walk, walk, yeah. Walk, 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 walk. He doesn't like walk to get around, but he'll walk if you ask him to walk. Anyway, I wanted to come in the backyard and check on all my plants and my chickens. So let's say hi to all of them and see how they're doing. I feel like I've been gone for six weeks. Oh my gosh, my flowers. <gasps> Look at these. Oh my God, those are so pretty. Wow, okay, amazing. That just poked me. I think, is this oak tree? What is this? I don't know, you guys will know. Here's my apples. <gasps> Look at these beautiful artichokes. Oh my God. You know what? That one totally looks ready in the middle there. That one is ready to go. <gasps> There's another one over there that looks ready to go too. Oh my God. Artichokes for dinner. Let's eat some bugs tonight for dinner. Let's eat some bugs. If y'all watched last time I ate my artichokes, there are bugs inside of them. Okay, wait, maybe that one's not ready. I thought this one would be ready, but it's not. It just looked like it was blooming from afar. Those are not ready, but I do think there was one ready. So I could make one singular artichoke. Lemons looking like lemons. Oranges looking like oranges. I don't know what that plan is. <gasps> Strawberries, oh my God, you guys. <gasps> are you freaking kidding me? I need Flynn to get out here ASAP. But this one's totally ready. <gasps> Strawberries. That one's not ready. That one's ready. Oh my God, how exciting. Look at this pepper. 
cute. Oh my gosh, I never thought I would be a garden girly. That is so not my vibes, but oh, look at this cute right here. Holy smokes, he's right in my head. Did you guys see him in my head? Of, the head of my shadow of my head. Wait, the sh head shadow. The shadow of my head. That's right. Oof, I'm so tired. I can't remember words. Okay, anyway, peach tree is growing slowly but surely. I'm so excited about this. I'm so freaking excited about peaches. My grapes, the little buds are forming. They're so cute. This is gonna be so pretty when it's all fully bloomed. Do you see all these little grapes? So tiny. Those aren't coming for a while, but it's very exciting. And then this is gonna be plums. I no, 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 this is apricots. My apricot tree, they're growing. I've already shown you all this. I don't know why I'm acting like you've never seen this before. Anyway, let's go see my chickens. <gasps> oh my God, you scared the crap out of me. Look how beautiful all these flowers. Holy smokes, it's so pretty. Wow. Hey guys, wanna come hang out with me? Applesauce, applesauce, my beautiful little applesauce, my applesauce. I love that applesauce whenever I pick her up, she just like lays down in my, that's pink by the way, in front of the camera. Hi. Pink, you're in the way, girl. Hi guys, I missed you. How are you doing? Did you have a good weekend? This right up front here, that's big. Oh, that sounds like a chicken. That's miscellaneous. Hi, don't peck my, I'm so afraid they're gonna peck my eyes. Sometimes they give me like direct eye contact. I'm like, are you about to peck my eyeballs out? Okay, this is so random and a weird thing to say, but I love chicken butts. I think they're so fluffy and cute. Like look at Applesauce's little chicken butt right now. Isn't that so cute? The way she's just laying on me is so cute right now. Hi, don't, please don't hurt me. I'm obsessed with these chickens. When we decided to get chickens and once we got them, I like started looking up like all these TikToks of people with chickens and I was like, gosh, these people are obsessed with their chickens. This is crazy. I mean, I love my pets, but this is wild. And now I have chickens and I'm like, oh, I get it. I don't know what it is. There's some chemical thing that happens to your brain once you get chickens where you're just like then suddenly obsessed with your chickens and like, That's true. I like miss them when I'm not down here. I'm like, I need to go check on the chickens. I'm like obsessed with them. Guys, there's a bunny in my backyard. Look how cute it is. My goodness. Flowers are so insane in the backyard right now. I'm gonna make a bouquet. I can't resist. I need to cut down those artichokes and I'm gonna make a bouquet of flowers because hello. I don't know how to do this. I'm not a florist, but I feel like I can just pick some flowers and put them in a vase and it'll look pretty because those flowers are pretty. So that's what I'm about to do. The one problem with this plan is that I hate bees. I don't hate bees. I think bees are awesome and useful, but I don't like getting stung by bees. And so I'm scared they're gonna sting me. And there's a lot of bees in my flowers. But anyway, let's get the artichokes first and then the flores. flowers you guys I mean it's not the best but I can't believe these are all from my backyard so pretty hi guys so um, kids are all asleep I'm exhausted but before I leave you today I wanted to um, be angry about something <laughs> You know, I'm, we don't talk very often on here about, you know, politics and weird things and how America is kind of a hot mess these days. Obviously, there are a lot of horrendous laws being put into place right now that are super dangerous and horrible for the trans community, the LGBTQ plus community, for women, for minorities. There are so many terrifying, horrible laws and bills being put into place right now in our country that are just devastating and awful. And I feel like the time and energy that is being put into these hateful bills and laws should be placed other places, but that's not what I'm here to talk about right now. I'm only bringing that up just to say like, oh my gosh, there's so many crazy laws and bills being passed. What I want to talk about right now is books, banned books. So you might have heard about the book bans um, across our country if you live here. And if you don't live here and you don't know about this, or if you do live here and you don't know about this, because I've actually talked to some people who didn't even know this was happening. There are books that are being banned in schools and libraries. That it's because they think they're like dangerous to children and they don't want kids learning about these things or these specific topics or whatever. So because I have kids, um, I'm interested in this and I'm interested in why books are being banned. So I was just curious and I started looking into what books are being banned. And these bans aren't like nationwide. It's like depends on the school and the district and the government and your state. And you know, it just depends on a lot of different things. So a lot of the books that I wanted to show you right now, I just want to show you what is being banned. Oh my God, I'm talking way too much. I'm just going to get into it. So the books I'm about to show you are books that I own that are currently banned in a lot of places in America. Okay. 
Here we go. This is a book called I Am Enough. I actually just bought this one recently and I read it to Flynn tonight because I knew it was on the banned book list in a lot of places. And I was like, what is so controversial about this book? You know, let's read it and find out. I'm gonna read this to you guys. I'm not gonna read all these books to you, but I'm gonna read this to you just so you know how horrible this book is and why children should not be reading it, okay? Like the sun, I'm here to shine. Like the voice, I'm here to sing. Like the bird, I'm here to fly and soar high over everything. Like the trees, I'm here to grow. Like the mountains, here to stand. Like time, I'm here to be and be everything I can. Like the champ, I'm here to fight. Like the heart, I'm here to love. Like a ladder here to climb and like the air to rise above. Like the wind, I'm here to push. Like a rope, I'm here to pull. Like the rain, I'm here to pour and drip and fall until I'm full. Like the moon, I'm here to dream. Like the student, here to learn. Sorry, you can't really see the pictures. Let me get closer. Like the water, here to swell. Like the fire, here to burn. Like the winner, I'm here to win. And if I don't, get up again. I know that I may sometimes cry, but even then, I'm here to try. I'm not meant to be like you, you're not meant to be like me. Sometimes we will get along and sometimes we will disagree. I know that we don't look the same, our skin, our eyes, our hair, our frame, but that does not dictate our worth. We both have places here on earth. And in the end, we are right here to live a life of love, not fear, to help each other when it's tough, to say together, I am enough. Why on earth would this book get banned? There's nothing but positivity and love, self-worth promoted in this book. What's wrong with this book? Someone please enlighten me. It's been banned in multiple places. Here's another great book that I have. I actually have a couple of these in my library. This is like a, a whole franchise of like different books. Here's one, a little feminist. I have little baby board books, little feminist um, books of little awesome women throughout time. I bought them for Flint when he was a baby. This one is great. And it's Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History. This is a great book. This is banned. Why would you ban a book that's about incredible, bold, strong women in black history? Why would anyone ever feel the need to not let children read about these women. Literally, this is just an incredible book that teaches about amazing, awesome, incredible, inspiring women in black history. Why would you not want to learn about these incredible women and be inspired by them and learn from them and be in awe and amazed by them? What is wrong, what is wrong with this book? Someone tell me why this is not an okay book for children to read. Another book that makes no sense that got banned is Pink is for Boys. My son's favorite color is pink, by the way, my four-year-old son. The book is basically like pink is for boys and girls, and um, blue is for girls and boys, and yellow is for boys and girls, and, and it just kind of goes through every single color and how every color is for both boys and girls. The reason I'm read is because he's never been introduced to the idea that like to even separate boys and girls in that way. Like if I were to read to him, pink is for boys and girls, that would be the first time that thought would be introduced into his head that like a color could be for one or the other. Do you know what I mean? That concept does not, has never been introduced to him yet. I'm kind of waiting for this to be read to him if someone ever tells him that his favorite color can't be pink. <laughs> this book, Love Makes a Family, is um, banned. It's just showing kind of every kind of like parental situation. You could kind of have an older, you know, maybe grandma, grandpa situation, um, maybe a single mom situation, maybe a single dad situation, um, a teacher or caregiver perhaps situation, a dad and dad situation, a mom and mom situation. What a crazy concept. It doesn't say anything about it, it's just pictures. It's literally just showing representation of all the different types of families that there are in the world because that is important for people to have representation of families that look like theirs and that all of it is love and all of it is special and all of it is important. It's just, this is all so stupid. Solway, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong and I'm so embarrassed if I am, I'm sorry. Again, me being not educated enough. I just bought this book, like literally this is, I just bought this one because when I was reading about banned books, I just kind of like was like, there's a bunch of books that I wanted to buy and there's more still coming. Um, when I was looking at the books that I own and seeing which ones were banned, I was like, oh my God, I was finding all these other books that seemed really great. And that's one way I think that you can support books that are banned. If you like want them to stay alive, like you can buy them for your own home, for your kids. Um, anyway, I haven't read this one yet, but it has really great reviews. Um, it's, I know it's banned a lot. It seems like a wonderful book about this wonderful uh, young girl and kind of learning to celebrate like her dark skin and like that she is beautiful and wonderful as she is. I have not read it yet though. I'm very excited to read it. I'm excited to read it to my kids. By the way, most of the books that are um, banned for kids have to do with people of color and the LGBTQ community. Isn't that stupid? This one's called Everywhere Babies. This is banned. This is what I'm gonna leave you with today and I'm gonna read to you this book. Every day, everywhere, babies are born. Every day, everywhere, babies are kissed. Every day, everywhere, babies are dressed. Every day, everywhere, babies are fed. Every day, everywhere, babies are rocked. Every day, everywhere, babies are carried. Every day, everywhere, babies make noise. Every day, everywhere, babies like toys. Every day, everywhere, babies play games. Every day, everywhere, babies make friends. Every day, everywhere, babies are walking. Every day, everywhere, babies are growing. 
thing. Every day, everywhere, babies are loved for trying so hard, for traveling so far, for being so wonderful, just as they are. God forbid we teach babies <laughs> that they're wonderful just as they are. So obviously there are books that like, you know, you need to make sure the books are age appropriate for the kids that are getting read these books or reading these books, obviously. But these? Why are these banned? My kids aren't in school yet, but school seems to be a, a scary place these days. God bless the teachers in this country. I think you are heroes. I don't know how you are surviving in this climate of book bans and just how scary it is right now in this country and how you are not getting paid to do the amount of work you're doing. You are literal heroes. But of all the issues that are happening in school right now in America, these are not the things that are gonna damage children in school, but these are banned. And things that are actually literally hurting children are not. Anyway, I'm gonna go. <laughs> and I love you all so much. And I'll see you tomorrow. We'll okay, be back. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.